Well, good morning. This is the uh, 10th Sunday after Pentecost, and welcome to our service this morning. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Come, let us worship God, our King. Come, let us worship Christ, our King and our God. Jesus said, before you offer your gift, go and be reconciled. As brothers and sisters in God's family, we come together to ask our fathers for forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess, we confess that we have, have sinned against, against you in thought, in thought word, word, and deed, by what, by what we, we have done and by what we have, we have left undone. undone. We, have we have not loved you with our heart. heart. We, we have, have not loved our neighbors, neighbors as ourselves. We are, we are truly, truly sorry and we humbly, we humbly repent. repent. For the, For the sake, sake of your, your Son, Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, have mercy, have mercy on, on us and forgive us, us that we, we may delight in your will and walk, and walk in your ways to the glory, glory of, your of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord is our light and our life. O come, let us worship. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior. Born in the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies. From the hands of all that hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers. And to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hand of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for I will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the days spring on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. The Lord is our light and our life. O come, let us worship. A reading from the book of Genesis. Jacob settled in the land where his father had lived as an alien, the land of Canaan. This is the story of the family of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was shepherding the flock with his brothers. He was a helper to the sons of Bela and Zilpah, his father's wives. And Joseph brought a bad report of them to their father. Now Israel loved Joseph more than any other of his children because he was a son of his old age and he had made him a long robe with sleeves. But when his brothers saw that their fathers loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peaceably to him. Now his brothers went to pasture their father's flock near Shechem, and Israel said to Joseph, Are not your brothers pasturing the flock at Shechem? Come, I will send you to them. He answered, Here I am. So he said to him, Go now, see if it is well with your brothers and with the flock, and bring word back to me. So he sent him from the valley of Hebron. He came to Shechem, and a man found him wandering in the fields. The man asked him, What are you seeking? I am seeking my brothers, he said. Tell me, please, where they are pasturing the flock. The man said, They have gone away, for I heard them say, Let us go to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them at Dothan. They saw him from a distance, and before he came near to them, they conspired to kill him. They said to one another, Here comes this dreamer. Come now, let us kill him and throw him into one of the pits. Then we shall say that a wild animal had devoured him, and we shall see what will become of his dreams. But when Reuben heard it, 
he delivered him out of their hands, saying, Let us not take his life. Reuben said to them, Shed no blood, throw him into this pit here in the wilderness, but lay no hand on him, that he might rescue him out of their hand and restore him to his father. So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe, the long robe with sleeves that he wore, and they took him and threw him into a pit. The pit was empty, there was no water in it. Then they sat down to eat, and looking up, they saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead, with their camels carrying gum, balm, and resin, on their way to carry it down to Egypt. Then Judah said to his brothers, What profit is it if we kill our brother and conceal his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, and not lay our hands on him, for he is our brother, our own flesh. And his brothers agreed. When some Midianite traders passed by, they drew Joseph up, lifting him out of the pit, and sold him to the Ishmaelites for twenty pieces of silver. And they took Joseph to Egypt. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 105. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him. Sing praises to him. And speak of all his marvelous works. Glory is his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Search for the Lord in his strength. Continually seek his face. Remember the marvels he have done. His wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O offspring of Abraham, his servant. O children of Jacob, his chosen. Then he called for a famine in the land. And destroyed the supply of bread. He sent a man before them. Joseph, who was sold as a slave. They bruised his feet in fetters. His neck they put in an iron collar. Until his prediction came true. The word of the Lord tested him. The king sent and released him. The ruler of the people set him free. He set him as a master over the household. As a ruler over all his possessions. To instruct his princes according to his will and to teach his elders wisdom. to teach his elders wisdom. Hallelujah. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Ghost of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
Hearing of this, the crowds followed him on foot from the towns. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed their sick. As evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy themselves some food. Jesus replied, They do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. We have here only five loaves of bread and two fish. They answered. Bring them here to me, he said. and he directed the people to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the people. They all ate and were satisfied. The disciples picked up twelve basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those who ate was about five thousand men, besides women and children. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. I'm Todd Townsend, Bishop of Huron. As I mentioned two weeks ago, I hope to stop and briefly take a look at these Genesis stories from the perspective of three women. I can really only borrow the viewpoint of other women as we read these stories. And when I do, 
uh, there are so many surprises and revelatory moments. In what follows, I'm reading with Wilda Gaffney, a womanist scholar, professor, and Episcopal priest who wrote this book, Womanist Midrash. Um, I also recommend her website, willgaffney.com. And with Will's help, we'll go back and notice some things about uh, Eve, Sarah, and Hagar, and maybe other people in the scriptures. Eve. In Genesis 2.18, it says in Will's translation, it is not good that the Adam, the human, is alone. I will make a mighty helper correlating to it. Most interpretations of this part of the story imply that Adam was a man who needed a helper, so God put him to sleep and made Eve out of his rib. And that is partly right. It's probably more accurate, though, to hear the words, the Adam at this point, as the human, the one who came from the red-brown earth, the humus. The word often means all of humanity. And the word for mighty helper usually refers in the Bible to God, the divine help that comes. And in English, there's this sense of a lower status of one being helped, but that's not the case here. The physical source material of this human mighty helper is, comes from within the earth, the earthling itself. God puts the creature to sleep and divides it in half. God splits the earth-colored atom into two equal portions, and Gaffney says it's like something like mitosis in cell division. And that makes sense to me. And it's already beginning to reshape my imagination even as it reveals the deeper truth in the story. And only at this point are the two referred to as male and female. So Eve becomes the first woman. If we read with care, the actual words of the story will adjust some of our assumptions about what this narrative implies, regarding especially the relationship between the first woman and the first man. The story goes on, to the setting of the Garden of Eden, and I won't go over that ground again. But outside of Eden, we see that Eve is not only the first woman, she is the first mother. Her name itself implies that she is the mother of all living. She's the first one to know the joys and sorrows of being a mother. And part of the sorrow is that she's the first mother of death, too, in, in the son of her de death of her son Abel. And we see this figure whose story has only been partly told. She's a woman and a mother, but first she's a partner and a mighty helper in the manner of God. And there's a mutuality of belonging and empowerment in her relationship with the other human. It is remarkable to see also how God provides for Eve and blesses Eve and notices Eve and does not subordinate Eve. God sows for Eve and clothes her, restores to her, to her, the woman, when her oldest is banished and her youngest is dead, and she provides a family for the earth. Sarah. Perhaps Sarah is not the most famous woman in the Bible, but Sarah, formerly Sarah, is certainly the most mentioned, far more times than any other woman, 55 times in the First Testament and four in the New Testament. She's an important woman. In Genesis 12, we're first introduced to her, and the word most associated with her is barren, infertile. This is an agricultural term that implies that her soil is inhospitable to life, or at least it seems to be. We also learn that she's 65 years old and very beautiful. In fact, when Abraham, formerly Abram, and Sarah begin to follow God's call and travel across the lands, Abraham's at great risk because of her beauty. He fears that the powerful men that they encounter will desire her and kill him off because he's her husband. So here we have a 65-year-old woman who is so exceedingly, maddeningly beautiful that she draws the covetous attentions of foreign monarchs, which is exactly what happened. And Abraham, fearing for his life, pretends that it's her, she's her sis, his sister. And the Egyptian pharaoh um, takes Sarah as his wife, gives all kinds of benefits to Abraham as a thank offering, I guess. And so basically Abraham pimps her out and benefits from it. But once the Pharaoh realizes the truth, he wants nothing to do with it and releases her and the two of them carry on rich. Sarah carries on rich, beautiful, and now the victim of sexual violence. 
She also continues childless or futureless in that world. In chapter 16, we see that Sarah then turns to surrogacy, giving her servant girl Hagar to Abraham as a wife so that she may become a mother. She takes things into her own hands by handing over another woman to be her body, providing a child, Ishmael. Then later, laughing at God's promises to make her the mother of a whole nation, she conceives and bears a child herself, Isaac. So both of these women become mothers of nations. Both of them come through painful and abusive situations. Both of them are favored by God, not just because they were given children, but because they were loved by the God who promised them something and provided it in surprising and strange ways. But it's so realistic, partly because it's painful the way it's woven into the story. So very real. Sarah finally is presented in the text as the fully rounded human being, fascinating, complex. She's given her own promise from God and she becomes the mother of faith. Eve and Sarah. I told you we'd take a look at Hagar as well, and we will, but there's a lot to that story and I'm gonna run out of time this week. So next week we'll do that. And I'll also extend a bit further to see what Rebecca brings into the story as we continue through Genesis. Until then, peace be with you. And I just wanted to take this opportunity to note that on July 20th, we released the Diocese of Huron's Loving Our Neighbors Amber Stage Guidelines. We're st still currently in the red stage now in August, but um, these are provided so that congregations can get ready for what we will hope will take effect in September. So these details are provided on the Diocese of Huron website. And if all goes well, our first Sunday indoor services will be September 13th. Should the pandemic worsen, of course, we may have to change that date. In the meantime, stay safe, keep distance, be kind, and pray for the healing of the world. Let us confess our faith as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will, he will come, come again, again to judge the living and the dead. I believe, I believe in the Holy Spirit, Spirit the Holy Catholic, Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection, the resurrection of the body, and, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. In today's intercessions, I will say, Lord, in your mercy, and your response will be, Hear our prayer. O oh God, we thank you for a summer's day with soft rains, sun to, sunshine to nourish our crops, and fresh air to encourage outdoor activities. Comfort of your care and help by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, on all who are in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. The Anglican Communion, we pray for the Diocese of Mamil, Nigeria, and Wa and Iba, South Sudan, also the province d'Eglise Anglican or Rwanda, the most reverend Laurent Mabanda. We also pray for Justin of Canterbury, the Anglican Church of Canada, pray for Bishop Robert Hardwick, the clergy and people of the Diocese of Quipel. We also pray for Mark, our national indigenous archbishop, and Linda, our primate. In the Diocese of Huron, we pray for Todd, our Bishop, and Marinez, Bishop of Amazonia. We pray also for the clergy and people of Trinity, Bayfield, St. George's Godridge, Christ Church, Port Albert. In our deanery, we pray for the right, sorry, Reverend Paul Sherwood, and for the people of Trinity, Simcoe. We pray for Tim, our Archdeacon, Support him generously with your grace, 
for what will be our new life together once we're able to gather again in person. We pray for Reverend Elias and the people of our Lord of Annunciation in Ekeraki, who we are partnering with. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For your whole church throughout the world, give courage to the midst of storms, so that we see and hear Christ calling, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. May we follow Christ wherever he leads. We pray for all areas of conflict at this time. They seem distant but not forgotten. Yemen, Syria, Iran, Sudan and the Congo. We also pray for Bri Root after their devastating explosion. As well as areas of disasters, droughts, floods and earthquakes. We also pray for the rainforests and the forest fires in Amazonia. We pray for all indigenous people not only in Canada, but throughout the world. We pray for the end of racism in the world. We pray for the LGBT. Let there be equality, justice, and harmony for all. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. At St. Mark's, we pray for our congregation. You have virtually gathered us to today as your people, and we thank you for the gift of being able to gather during a time of separation. We pray for those new to this community, for teachers preparing for a new and totally different school year, head of all those who are struggling with unexpected hardships. We pray for the Reverend Bob, Deacon, John, Christine, Lloyd, Allison, Jody, Dan, and Debbie, as well as our wardens, parish council, who keep our parish operating. We pray for those involved in helping prepare our weekly online worship team. We pray for up and coming online Bible school team. Help us to deepen our faith and understanding during this time of separation. We pray for all parishioners at this time. Wrap your arms around us and blow your spirit upon us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We continue to pray for those afflicted by COVID-19, the sick and the frontline workers. We pray for those in need. Everyone who calls upon your name will be safe. Accompany all who are lonely. Hear the voices of those who cry out in anguish and support those who are frustrated in their search. We pray for those who are suffering on this day. We especially pray for Carol, Owen and family, Mary Rose, Dave, Evelyn, Dorothy, Ella, Malcolm, John, Bob, Nathan and family, Sue, Elaine, Nancy, Mark, as well as those on our long-term list. Natalie, Jordan, Brock, Jack, Roger, Patricia, Wayne, Port and Carol, Stephanie, Marie, Gord, Vicky, Dawn and family, Joy, Jason, Dale, Andrew, Mandy, Addison, Alexis, Bill, Laura Lee, Dale, James, as well as anyone else who is known to us, either silently or aloud. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give you thanks, O God, for the saints, for the saints of the saints of the whole church from all times and places, and for the saints of all our lives in your community whom you have gathered yourself. Give thanks for the life and witness of Michael Lilborn, and we pray for Sean Lilborn. Bianca and Kim McClelland and Sharon Bliss during their time of grief. We pray for all those who are celebrating another year. May your special day be filled with God's love and miracles. He is especially for you. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you. Receive our prayers, O God, and those too deep for word through Jesus Christ. Our Lord. Amen. Amen. The collect for this Sunday, the 10th Sunday after Pentecost. Ever faithful one, you answer the cries of all who call upon your name. Give us grace to trust in you so that we may walk faithfully amidst the storms of life. Through Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
and the Collect for Racial Reconciliation. O oh God, you made us in your own image and redeemed us through Jesus, your Son. Look with compassion on the whole human family. Take away the arrogance and hatred which infect our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us. Unite us in bonds of love and work through the struggles and the confusion to accomplish your purpose on earth. That in your good time, all nations and races may serve you in harmony around your heavenly throne. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We gather our prayers and praises into one. Let us sing as our Savior Christ has taught us. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And may Christ, who out of defeat bring you new hope and a new future, fill you with his new life, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and evermore. Amen. Go in peace, sir. Love and serve the Lord.